If you could have dinner with anybody, who would it be and why? Leave it down in the comments below. Welcome to The Whole Truth, everyone, where I am taking you through the entire Bible from Genesis all the way to Revelation without skipping anything. So if that sounds good to you, make sure that you grab a Bible and open it up to Leviticus chapter 8. We're talking about the consecration of the priest. And can you remember those parts of consecrating the priest that we've seen already? Remember with me that Moses has a brother. His brother's name is Aaron. And to consecrate Aaron and Aaron's sons as the priest, they brought them to the tabernacle in front of all the people and they had to wash in the laver. There's this brazen laver outside and they had to wash. And then they were given garments and they had to put these garments on in front of everyone and sacrifices had to be made. And some of the blood from the sacrifices was put onto their ear and on their thumb and on their big toe. And they were handed some of the meat from the sacrifices and some bread from the table. And they had to wave that bread before the Lord. But then Moses took the bread back and the meat back and he burned it on the altar, burned it all up. It's called a wave offering. They were waving it before the Lord. And now we come to the end of the chapter after all of those parts of consecrating the priest and in Leviticus chapter eight, and look at what happens in verse 30. Then Moses took some of the anointing oil and some of the blood, which was on the altar and he sprinkled it on Aaron, on his garments, on his sons, on the garments of his sons with him. And he consecrated Aaron, his garments, his sons, and the garments of his sons with him. And Moses said to Aaron and his sons, boil the flesh at the door of the tabernacle of meeting and eat it there with the bread that is in the basket of the consecration offering, as I commanded, saying, Aaron and his sons shall eat it. What remains of the flesh and of the blood you shall burn with fire, and you shall not go outside the door of the tabernacle of meeting for seven days, until the days of your consecration are ended. For seven days he shall consecrate you, and as he has done this day, Day, so the Lord has commanded to do to make atonement for you. Therefore, you shall stay at the door of the tabernacle of meeting day and night for seven days and keep the charge of the Lord so that you may not die. For so I have commanded. So Aaron and his sons did all the things that the Lord had commanded by the hand of Moses. Okay, do you see it? There, we're at the end of the consecration and Moses goes and gets some of the blood from the altar and some of the oil. He mixes the blood and the oil and he begins to sprinkle it on Aaron and Aaron's sons, but even more specifically than just sprinkle it on them. The Bible makes sure, and in Leviticus, it's recorded for us that they're purposefully sprinkling that blood and that oil on the, the clothing, the garments of Aaron and his sons. Now, these are the priestly garments that they were dressed in earlier. Remember, they were washed. Aaron and his sons were washed and they had these garments put on them, the, the tunic and the robe and the sash and the, the turban that was on their heads. All of these different articles were put on them and so they were made to clean and then they were made to put on these fresh garments. And then Moses takes blood and oil, mixes it together and purposefully begins to sprinkle it on those same garments, those priestly garments. Why? Why would he have them clean up and then sprinkle this blood and this oil on them? Well, number one, just understand that it's symbolic. There really was blood and there really was oil, but those things were symbolic. And I don't know if you've ever had oil get in a fabric before, but if you have, you know how difficult it is to clean oil out of fabric. As a matter of fact, I would dare to say even almost impossible. And the same with blood. If you've got one stain that is really ridiculous to try to get rid of, it's blood. I mean, it's really hard to get a, a blood stain out of a garment and especially garments that have a lot of white fabric on them, which these priestly garments do. So with all of this white fabric and the blood and the oil that is obviously not just going to stain for today and then wash out in tomorrow's washing, no, it's going to stain and stay permanently. Well, let's think a little deeper about this. 
What exactly does the blood represent? When these animals were being sacrificed, what does their blood represent? It's the sacrifice of the Lamb of God, the spotless Lamb of God that would one day take away the sins of the world. If I'm confusing you by saying that, the blood represents the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. The blood represents the forgiveness that we have because Jesus took our punishment. That's the reason we can have forgiveness in him. We, we can ask for forgiveness because he took our punishment. Does that make sense? So the blood represents the sacrifice. What do we know? We've learned this several times already. What do we know that oil represents in the Bible? The Holy Spirit. And that is the oil of the Old Testament that's being sprinkled. That's what it represents is the Holy Spirit. You see, for the believer, for the person who's been consecrated in the Lord Jesus, for the person who's been set aside, they've put their faith in Jesus Christ. They have forgiveness by his blood and they have from God the Father, they have the Holy Spirit indwelling them. Now, you may not like that term, but that's biblical. We could go into the book of 1 Corinthians and see where Paul says that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. You maybe have heard somebody say that in your life. You might have heard somebody say, well, don't you know your body is a temple? Well, you know, when we talk about health and fitness, and I love fitness, I love working out, but that's not exactly what your body is a temple means. Um, what Paul was really saying was that we should flee from fornication and from sexual immorality and from sin because our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. See, here's the, the marked difference. Now understand what I'm using that word on purpose. Just like the priests of the Old Testament were marked Everybody who came to them, remember when the priests were there serving, when the people wanted to get to God, they went to the priest to get to God. And when they would go to them, what would they see of their priest? When the people of Israel would go to their priest, what would they see? The blood-stained garments, the oil-stained garments. This ought to be the noticeable difference in the life of a believer, you and I who are consecrated to the Lord, that we are set aside by the forgiveness that Jesus had offered us and the Holy Spirit that indwells us because we believe in him. Do you see that? This should be not a one-time thing. It shouldn't be like, oh, I was filled with the Holy Spirit on this one day when I was in worship. Friends, no, our life ought to be marked. A marked difference that sets us aside is that we have an indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And that's, by the way, that's why our lives look so different when we're believers. You see, we forgive differently because we've been forgiven by him. We love differently because we've been loved by him. And we live differently because the Holy Spirit is inside of us. What used to seem like, a, like fun, what used to seem like a party, what used to seem like the best thing in the world, now to us seems like, well, as Paul says it, all of my accomplishments seem like dung. They're worth nothing compared to the life that I have in him. I have a life set aside and I get to live in the spirit because the spirit lives in me. And that should be a marked difference throughout my whole life. That's seen on the outside. This wasn't just sprinkled on their skin to be washed off later. This was sprinkled purposefully on their garments so that it would be seen every day that there's a difference. These men have been set aside. They've been consecrated. Now, after that consecration with the blood and the oil, we see that in starting in verse 31, we see that now, remember earlier I told you they took the, uh, the bread and the meat and they didn't eat it. They waved it before the Lord. They had to burn it. That was earlier in chapter eight. But now we see that they, in later in the day, as they're being consecrated, later in that same day, they're given the bread and the meat and they're sitting at the door of the tabernacle. And now they're sitting and they're eating. I love the fact that the eating comes last. If you think about it like this, um, something that's dead can't eat. You get that? Like something that's not alive, it can't eat. If we talk about a plant, if it totally dies, you can water it all you want, but it's not going to come back because it can't take in those nutrients, right? And the same with an animal. Like eating is not something that brings life. Okay, do you understand this? Eating is not something that set them apart and consecrated them from the beginning, but as they've been consecrated, they've been washed and new garments have been put on. They've been consecrated with the blood on their ear and their thumb and their big toe. Now they're sitting down after they've been sprinkled with the blood and the oil. Now they're sitting down and they're eating. They're sustaining. Listen, I need you to hear this. The relationship we have with Christ is not a one-time event when I'm in church, I said a prayer, 
or this one time this thing happened and I committed myself to the Lord or I was at some evangelistic conference or whatever your story might be. Friends, in Christ, we need Him to sustain us every single day. You see, the life that I now live, I live through Him and He lives in me. You see, that is the consecration that we have in Him. Not only does He save us, but He sustains us. And my sustenance is him. Where I find life is in him. Where I find answers, it's in him. Where do I find peace? It's in him. Where do I find reconciliation? In him. He is the one who sustains me. And so as these men have been consecrated, now after the whole day of consecration, now they sit down and they dine, they eat, and they are sustained. And God said that this was to happen for seven days, the same process. The next day they're to come to the tabernacle or or they're really supposed to stay at the tabernacle, but they're supposed to come out to the laver. And then at the laver, they're going to be washed and they're going to be clothed and they're going to be, uh, have the blood put on their ear and on their thumb and on their toe. And they're going to be sprinkled with the blood and the oil. And then after the whole day's events, then they're going to do it again. They're going to sit down and they're going to eat with the Lord again. And they're going to keep this for seven days over and over and over again. And that's really, that's how the life that we live with Christ is. It's every day. He sustains us every day. He cleanses us every day. We are made new. Paul said it this way. The apostle Paul said, I die daily. Every day. Every day is new. Did you notice that also uh, that God told Moses to tell Aaron to take the leftover, whatever they couldn't eat of their bread and their meat, they were to take it and burn it in the fire? That's interesting, right? Don't don't save it as leftovers. We're not worried about waste in this area. It's not like put it in some wrap and try to keep it fresh and then eat it tomorrow. You know, I, I think that that brings up a point that his mercies are new. Every day his mercies are made new. Every day his grace is new. Every day there's more to learn about him. And here's the best thing that I want you to know. It's always fresh. That's one of the things that I love so much about the Bible. If you haven't noticed, I really do love the Bible. And I know that there are answers for our lives in the Bible, but we've got to get into it. We've got to read it. And so because I have this love for the Bible, one reason that I I have that is because every time I read it, there is something new. It's the living word of God. And every time I dig in, there's more to learn. I had a professor once tell me this. He said, if God is truly eternal, then when we are with him in eternity, there will still every day, there will be something more to learn. We will always be able to grow in our relationship with him because he is eternal. There will always be more. His mercies are new every day. His grace is new every day. Friends, he'll make you new. He'll make you into a new creation and he'll set you aside for his work. He'll consecrate you. Just like he consecrated the priest of the Old Testament. What has he told us? We're a nation of priests. That's the believers. Those of us who have come to him by faith, we are a nation of priests set aside for his good pleasure and set aside for good works. Have you done that? Have you been consecrated to the Lord? Has he set you aside? Has he done the work for you? Is he the one sustaining you? Or are you still depending on yourself? And even worse, are you trying to depend on your works? I hope that you'll put your faith in Christ and only in Christ, because there is nothing else that you could ever do that would make for your salvation or your consecration. You'll only find it in the one person of Jesus. All right, I hope you enjoyed today's video and I will see you tomorrow with Leviticus chapter nine. See you then.